There's a fire in the sky in the morning When the sun is a crimson dawning And the earth is a glow like a burning ember Whose land is this? This is my land I've devolved into an amphibian ancestor. Um, You're a new mutant. Yeah, so this is uh, Animal Week. Matt, you picked this. Um, <sighs> both Roar and um, <sighs> Hell Comes to Frogtown. Yeah. And uh, I'm anxious to talk about both. I'm like... Wait a minute, holy shit! <laughs> I gotta take this off, I think. <laughs> I think I gotta take it off! <laughs> uh. Ah! <laughs> okay, maybe it's not coming back. Alright. You're I'm a frog like, now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a frog in the fucking moon. <laughs> this is some quality content. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, it was actually me, guys. Whoa! <sighs> Now that my hair's all messed up and my nose is, like, dripping. <laughs> my nose be dripping, man. Okay, Roar. And, uh, Hell Comes the Frog Town. Yeah. yeah, this is 151. The new generation of the Buddy Shots, dude. Um, so, I had a fun time, uh, watching movies about animals and learning so much about animals. <laughs> How about you? Uh, one of them for sure... <laughs> To a degree, it was also kind of a uh, total propaganda piece, but in a good way. Yeah, learning all the wrong lessons. Yeah, <laughs> and then Hell Comes to Frogtown was wait what? It was a documentary as well. <laughs> so I was actually going to anti frog <laughs> propaganda. So <laughs> would you be shocked to learn that only twenty percent of our audience has seen Hell Comes to Frogtown? No. But I'm shocked that anyone. Forty percent have seen uh, Roar. Wow, that's not. I don't think that's too shocking because this is kind of something you hear about and you go, "I kind of got to see that." Yeah, because I think it splash when it came out. Yeah. it was a finally officially released like ten years ago. Yeah, but like Roar is one of those things that like definitely once you hear it, you're like, "Wait a minute, fucking this dude decided to like film with actual with lions." Like, with his family and shit, like, and it's like, even though I'm sure, you know, they're trained, it's like, <laughs> when they're Barely. going nuts, it's like, you know, and they're playing, like, even, they're all, they're always, like, playing and stuff, but, like, that's like playing with a freaking, you know, you know, a lion or, like, a freaking elephant, they're way stronger than you. That's yeah. like, if Superman was like, I'm just gonna play around with this person and I'm not gonna, like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop! Ah! He's like, I'm not gonna fucking stop! 
Uh, like, he's not going to hold back, I guess. Or, like, he's not smart enough to know his own strength. <laughs> like, animals are stupid. <laughs> They're just playing. Are, are they? They play for keeps. Yeah. No animals were harmed in the making of this film. 70 cast and crew members were. I think that's one of the reasons why I, I wasn't, like, too upset when I was watching this. Because I always no. had that in the back of my mind that, like... At the end of the day, no animals were hurt, and, like, no humans actually died. I mean, people got fucking hurt, but, like, you know, they kind of knew what they signed up for yeah. when they did this, so... and not I would have been pissed if it was, like, one of those Italian movies where, like, 50 spiders gets killed or they cut off the head of a fucking frog or a rat or something, and I'm like, why? There were a few troubling things, like, when, um... They, they tranquilized a couple of lions. Yeah. Like, those animals were in distress, which was hard to watch. But I'm like, what are you talking about? That was my favorite part. <laughs> I was like... And I don't want to see people get hurt, but, like, <laughs> when they knew what they were... Like you yeah. said, they knew what they were signed up for, so this is what's going to happen, dude. You I'm like, they pay the consequences. I was like, Jesus. Are there any special features on this? The yeah. making of Roar. Q&A with cast and crew. Uh, the grandeur of Roar. An essay by Tim League. Photo gallery. Feature commentary with John Marshall and Tim League. Oh, I bet that's pretty legit. Did you listen to it ever? Yeah, um, probably about ten years ago or whenever okay. this came out. Tippy because... So what is Roar? It's a movie from 1981. Um, Perfect signal. It was never released in the U.S., um, only internationally. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like a lost film mm -hmm. until... It was rediscovered and officially released in the 2010s. Nice. Um, but what's the story of Roar? Because there's so much plot. <laughs> yeah, this movie is like, how long is this There's movie? no plot at all. How long there's is 90 this? 90 minutes. Yeah, it should have been like 50 or 40. Mm -hmm. um, so the real story of this is like kind of just like a skit or something that they kind of brought into like a full-fledged film. It's uh, There's a guy that decided to go and do some African studies or whatever about big cats and, like, you know, animals and stuff. And his doctrine is that, but then, like, his family comes to meet him and it's a big mix-up because he leaves to go pick them up. They show up and then run into a bunch of hijinks, like Abbott and Costello style. And then at the very end, he finally shows up and they all kind of, like, love the cats. That's the entire plot yeah. right there. One sentence. <laughs> But this movie, like, the plot is not important. It's the spectacle of seeing people <laughs> interacting violently with it's a tons lot of, of It's a lot of B-roll. Yeah. For sure. Um, there's, um... <laughs> this is, like, one of those things that, like, stuff was happening in this film that I was just like, what the... F well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's happening, like, what the fuck? But, like, not even the animals, like, parts where people just roll off the fucking roof in barrels i was like yeah. this is totally like <laughs> this is like something i think we would have tried to do back in the day totally. like so stupid like <laughs> could have got killed um yeah and like a part where a dude like jackie chan drives a motorcycle all the way up to the roof and then drive fl drives it off and it's like one of his fucking sons and i'm like he must like they must fucking this must be like the world's most like endearing father <laughs> in real life because they w do anything for this fucking guy yeah. because it's his two sons and uh his wife tibby hedron and their and his her daughter melanie griffith so it's like they're literally like there's a part where i mean there's all kinds of fucking weird shit in this film but like not weird but like the part where there's parts where people are le legit fucking like held down by like a lion and it's like gnawing on their fucking head and shit <laughs> <laughs> it's it's and the super part where intense. like Tippy Hedren gets her fucking leg or arm snapped by the fucking elephant elephant's fucking trunk. Yeah. It's like these are trained animals, but they're also so strong that like they're they they're not trying. They're just playing, and it's like, dude, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, so, what did you think overall? Um, I thought it was fine. Um. I thought that it, like, the best stuff in this film was, like, watching just the animals, like, the, this kind of, um, like, at the end when they're kind of being loved on and stuff, and they're, like, 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 happy and stuff, and, 
Um, it was kind of hard to watch, even though it was like, like the parts where the animals were playing and stuff. And they're like, yeah, yeah, and I was like, Jesus, and it's like obviously none. Like that was all like them just playing and stuff. But it's it's a little bit different when you watch like dogs play around and cats play around, and then you see big cats fucking playing around, and you're like, Jesus. Mm-hmm. So like, but um, the only I think like also the part where they like kill the fucking lions and stuff it wasn't that bad to watch because like i knew that it was fake because they i think i don't know if they just went out of their way to like make sure they showed the animals breathing too after they were dead so it was kind of like apparently they had to uh, they like put them them under once a month to take blood tests like to make medical reasons and that's they just did that and then Mm. filmed it and then pushed them down a hill while they were passed (laughs) out I was wondering how they did that, how that happened. I want, I was like, how would you train an animal to fucking fall down a hill? But I guess they were doped up. If they were doped up, that's actually kind of fucked up yeah. to like push an animal. I mean, they had to do it anyways. They had to push an animal down a hill. There was no that. fucking. <laughs> that's the only thing I think now that I knew that. That's kind of fucked. Yeah, up. it's not cool to watch. Um, but I think this movie was like it's like harrowing to watch because it's like it's pretty intense. His fucking fi- like two two separate people get locked into fucking like. Lockers? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody fucking Indiana Jones and fucking gets in a fridge and almost <laughs> suffocates. They were like, what were you thinking? And I'm like, what the fuck do you think he was thinking? He, like, there's just fucking lions all over the place. Also, at one point in this film, there's like a 180 shift. They fall asleep and wake up and the lions are sleeping with them. Mm-hmm. And like, there's like ADR of someone being like, if they wanted to hurt us, they'd hurt us. Right. And I was like, fuck you, dude. This is so... That's the thing about this movie is like... It, it tries to teach all yeah. the wrong lessons. Like, right. These animals are your friends. Yeah, like, wild they're animals cuddly. are someone to be f- yeah. played with. They're people, like, just like us. It's like, no, they're not, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they're not dogs. They're not humans. It's like, the only reason when you're able to make this film is because they're, like, they, they're, like, raised in captivity and trained all their lives. And even then, people got fucking hurt, so... Yeah, I mean, it's like, a miracle no one died. Like, right. uh, Jan de Bont, the director of photography, mm-hmm. who went on to be a big director, like, he got his scalp ripped off. By a lion, dude. He had By to have... the guy that like made the film. <laughs> yeah. He's like he... Melanie Griffith was like, fuck you. He had to get like two hundred stitches. Tippy Hedren was like, fuck And you. Melanie Griffith got her face like ripped off and had to get like reconstructive surgery. She was like <laughs> Uh yeah, like you said, Tippy Hedron got her leg broke and a lion bit her skull and the tooth scraped against her bare skull. Yeah, you can see like there's a part where like somebody's fucking got their head like in a wide mouth <laughs> yeah it's like Ugh. it's horrifying um but it's also like like a train wreck you can't stop watching it i'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's really nothing like it which is why yeah. what i admire about it um it's really like the story like we said is mm-hmm. not not even there um, he keeps, like, roping his, like, uh, African friend into helping him, yeah. and, like, this guy is, like, the nicest guy ever, because he's like, what the, what are you doing with these lions in here? They're gonna <laughs> fucking kill me, or whatever, and he's just like, don't worry, they're just playing, like, like, don't worry about it, uh, and then five seconds later, they try to, like, fucking grab him, and he's like, stop, and I'm like, it's like, th- the main guy was fucking insane. Like, yeah, this guy was like fucking because he gets in the middle of like these lion. He's fucking like, stop fights. fighting! He's like, stop, stop fighting, guys! And yeah, like, gets he's, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I have to, I have to save the main lion, or like Togar will kill him or whatever. And I'm like, dude, that is like the total fucking wrong thing you should do. Like, he's directly interfering with fucking nature. Yeah, like just because he likes this lion, he's yeah. like fucking totally like pushing things in his fucking favor it's like good lord dude. i couldn't agree more what's well, like what it's so wrong well it's like what uh what studies are he, are he tr- is it like is he trying to like do because it's supposedly for his like you know he's like he, he's been out here like studying for his like app you know because he's like i guess he's a doctor or something but it's like what the fuck is he trying to prove like that the, you know, you know, no shit if you fucking push your narrative one way as a human you're gonna win because fucking animals can't do shit against like a fucking gun yeah i admire like he clearly loves the animal right that's to be admired but like everything else that he does is so wrong yeah when that when he comes in and the animals jump up and like kiss him and stuff like oh okay but then like there's parts where it's like they're like yeah they're so big though it's like when they go to kiss him like you can't even fucking see him because like three of them jump up yeah to give him a hug and kiss him and it's like 
he's fucking not there. Like, they could have killed the shit Seeing out of a him. lion's, like, monstrous head yeah. right next to a human's head is, like, that's, like, stunning. Yeah. Well, you you know, it's like, you have no fucking chance. Yeah. You have and no it, chance. I'm not saying that animals can't form bonds with humans, either. But, yeah. like, this is just, like, so wrong the way it's approached. Well, it's also, like, the amount, too. Yeah. Like... It'd We're be, talking like yeah. forty lions. <laughs> you, you, it'd be one thing if it was like you raised like like a like a lion or like a tiger mm-hmm. or a bear. Oh my! <laughs> uh, from birth, and they were in captivity, and they knew no other way. Because there's right. plenty of things like that where like they go their entire lives and they're domesticated. And they never like try to like hurt the because they're like part of the family. But if like you, especially if you take in lions like that are from the wild and they they're like being rehabilitated like you never know if like you know because there's even one in this film togar that's like a rogue lion and it's like you never know when that one like the fucking chimp that like went rogue and fucking ripped that lady's face off yeah exactly that's Jesus. a perfect example but it's like also like that part where he's like the first shit when he shows up and he's like Togar, why are you gonna be starting this on today of all days? And I was like, like he's treating him like a fucking kid, and like this is a fucking wild animal. I know that if he's a rogue, el- like lion that's trying to like take over, like, uh, like you don't want to be fucking around with him. Yeah, because at one point he like kills two fucking dudes that tried to that killed like random lions that were yeah. his. That was pretty disturbing. <laughs> yeah, the. Togar was like fucking a savage balls attack. the shit out of him, and I'm like, I mean, they had it fucking coming because they yeah. fucking killed some fucking random lions, but in the narrative, but in the actual thing, it's like Jesus. Yeah, they're getting rocked. You could kind of tell too that those dudes' faces were like, holy shit, like when they were actually being attacked. Like even though it was playing, they were like, it's like that's not acting. That guy was fucking horrified. Yeah. So, like, we've been talking about all the injuries and stuff, and you don't actually see, like, most of these injuries. Yeah, they kind of cover it up with, like, takes, there, like, other takes that they right. kind of stitch into it. And but stuff. there is real blood in this movie, like, yeah. like uh, on certain in certain scenes. Like, yeah. uh, Noel or whatever gets his hand ripped open yeah. at the beginning. That was all ripped. I mean, you can tell. That that's pretty... There's, like, scenes where, like, he'll have, like, his shirt be fine, and then, like, in the <laughs> next scene, even though nothing happened, it's ripped up yeah. to shreds. So it's like something must have happened in another take that they just kind of like. There's a part where he's like, "Sit down, they won't mess with you," and they fucking in the background they're like, "Whoa, whoa!" <laughs> like fucking. And the fucking yeah. one dude's like, "What are you thinking? Oh. You're fucking crazy!" And I'm like, "Yeah, no shit." I agree. So the real story is, I guess, um, like Noel Marshall and Tippy Hedren were on safari in Africa somewhere, and they saw a yeah. house like this that had been kind of taken over by c- cats. Mm-hmm. But then they recreated this in California. So, like, the whole house and stuff was actually in California. Oh, wow. a bunch of lions and tigers and pumas or whatever, panthers and stuff. Yeah, they had jaguars, I think. Yeah, jaguars. Animals that would never be together in real nature. Yeah, they're all, like... I mean, like, if they were, like... Yeah, like you said, in real nature, if they're, like, in a preserve or... Not a preserve, uh, like, a rehabilitation place or something where they can't be released back in a, like... I was going to say society (laughs) into the wild. Like, they're fine, but... But the sad part is, at one point, a bunch of the lions escaped and had to be killed. So it's like, again, so wrong. Look at what the the results of this are. Yeah. Like, Just for a stupid mess with fucking them. film. Yeah. Um, but on a lighter note, it does crack me up. Like, <laughs> the funniest part to me about this movie is the actors are trying to, like, deliver lines. And they're getting fucked up by, like, he's like, hey, how's it going? Oh, whoa! Yeah. Knocked over. <laughs> That's not like he gets taken. Yeah, because they all rush him and stuff because they're coming to say hi. Yeah. Because it's like while I was watching this, there were certain lions that I was like, this kind of reminds me of like, you know, like our dogs or whatever. Like they'll rush and kind of be rough, but like they're saying hello and stuff. But like imagine that like a huge fucking animal doing that to you. Like it's like even if they're like I've said, like even if they're like playing or they love you, like they're still going to knock you the fuck down because they're like. Or potentially yeah. kill you. Right. Like, this is so... You can feel the danger when you watch it. Yeah. Like, it's real. You can feel the tension. Um, Do it, the... <laughs> go ahead. It was disturbing um, when that lion... Or not... <laughs> when the elephant rushed Tippy Hedren. Because you could tell it was <laughs> yeah. a real, like, charge. Yeah. Like, that elephant was going to murder her. And it was yeah. so, super scary. It was like... Um, you could tell which lions are, like, 
totally like the acting ones and the ones that they want to be like that are trained really well and have been domesticated because mm. they'll like just kind of be light about it like the part where like uh they row into the shore and like the lion keeps like pulling it over and you can tell that it's like that's a lion that's totally like domesticated like not domesticated more, more docile but, or right he's like been raised since birth and stuff because it's like it's not the like it's just kind of like looking around and you know doing mm. what it was told to do and stuff whereas like the other ones they literally like run a motherfucker down at one point <laughs> and he just gets knocked over and then they run off and it's like jesus I realized when I was watching this, like, maybe the reason I really like this movie is mm-hmm. because it's got people hiding in barrels. One of my favorite concepts. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> people fucking fly down the fucking <laughs> roof or whatever. The guy, like, drowns himself, essentially. Yeah. In a barrel. I was like, hey. Um, what'd you think of when Melanie Griffith was getting revenanted by that lion? <laughs> he was totally, she's flying down on her yeah. stomach. Lion full on top yeah. of her. And holding she's like, her down, like hell, chewing mom. on her. Yeah, that was fucked up. It was upsetting. It's they had tried to like cover it at one point because there's a part where like they're like, let's save her, and like they go to save her, but like there's no way in fuck they were gonna get her out. So like they had to wait till that was over, and then the next take she's laying and the lions barely on her, and they pull her out because at first he's literally completely on her and like yeah, and I'm like Jesus, that was extreme. So it's like yeah. Also, like, there's some major fucking ADR in this film. Oh, yeah, it's like, horrible. So bad. It's bad. The acting is garbage. I mean, this is this is not a good film in the traditional sense, but... Yeah, there's a part you, where, yeah. at the end, they're, like, at, like, an hour and 20, like, right before the movie's kind of over. And that's, like, an hour and 20, 40 seconds, an hour and 21, and 26 seconds, they say, they're really friendly. <laughs> and then, at one, one hour and 20 minutes and 44 seconds, and one twenty one thirty. Oh, she's beautiful. So, like, Tippy Hedren says that twice. They reuse it, like, j- not even a minute later. And the same thing with, like, they're really friendly. And I'm like, dude, this is so full of shit. Yeah. Like, this really was is. stuff where, like, like propaganda. They, they went back in the ADR shit and, like, the dad was like, okay, let's fucking put this in. Yeah. To make it seem like... Like, the whole thing in the last, like, 15 minutes is a complete 180. Like, yeah. they're being fucking horrified this whole time. It's like a nightmare. Yeah, and then at the end, it's like the worst possible stock kids movie where like right. something goes 180 like they wake up and they they're like oh the elephants would have killed us if they wanted to in our sleep and i'm like uh okay and that's when they're like the animals never attack them from that point they're like we love you mm-hmm. and it's like okay it's Let's obvious slumber party it's today. obvious that these lions and like all these animals over here are more domesticated that you're using right now because they're literally like there's that one of that like tiger on its side and she's like you know petting it and it's like <laughs> so it's like a little baby but it's like you know there's even a line where she's like there's a, a little cub and they're petting it to like quick before the mother comes back so it was like i don't know if that was a slip because <laughs> like no shit dude like what and the kills f- us all. yeah yeah it's like um just a couple other notes i had um <laughs> When Tippy Hedren let the honey drip on her face and let the lion lick it off, that was like one of the most dangerous things I've ever seen in a movie. Like, oh, when that was starting to happen, I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. Um, at, some, at one point, like, you see there's just blood all over the walls. Like, that's real, dude. Also, like, when fucking he comes back and he goes, Oh, what happened? <laughs> I'm like... Because Togar totally ripped the house apart. Like, he's busting through yeah. the walls Kool-Aid man yeah. style. And, I thought and that was like, the cool. main lion, like, runs him off. And yeah. it's, like, saves the family. But it's, like, what happened? I'm, like, did you live with fucking, like, 50 lions? Yeah. What do you fucking think happened? Um, have you ever seen the movie Grizzly Man? No, but I've heard of it. Isn't it, like, where a dude goes out and, like, stays with, like, grizzly, like yeah. grizzlies and then eventually one just fucking eats his ass? Yeah. yeah. That dude is exactly like Noel yeah. Marshall. Like, he thinks... The bears he are has a, his friends and a, family. A warped misconception yes. that the... He loves them that the, more the, than anything else. The couple that are domesticated here are exactly the same as a lion that you would find in the wild mm-hmm. that would, like, if you got... If you said hi to it and fed it enough, it would become your friend. Whereas, yeah. like, it would eventually one day, if it was hungry enough and you didn't feed it, it would kill the shit out of you, probably. Yeah. Or, I mean, who it's... knows, it won't... Who knows if it wouldn't kill someone else just randomly. Like, yeah. It's tragic, but, like... The, the point is, like, 
animals should be loved and like respected yeah but they shouldn't necessarily be your you know yeah they're they're it's not tragic people. but magic <laughs> yeah no like they should be like it's like the whole thing with like it should be understood teddy bears where it's just like oh yeah you know like bears if you like you know they should just be like you know you take them and you love them and kiss them and it's like yeah they're they look like yeah cute but like jesus christ dude what the fuck are you thinking exactly it's the same thing i mean if a fucking killer shark like a fucking great white looked like cute to most people it'd be the same thing they'd yeah. be going out there and trying to kiss it and stuff yeah, and it's hug like, it and... what the fuck and sharks i think are like less like likely to kill yeah. someone than a fucking because they're yeah it's like unless they're like you're getting chummed up or whatever yeah so stupid um my last note is I the, there is a really cool shot at the beginning when he's racing against these yeah, uh, yeah. long neck giraffes. And, uh, <laughs> that reminded me of uh, there's a shot like that in Speed Racer and in uh, Loop on the Third Intro where like they're racing on giraffes against each other. Oh, nice. And there's also a part where in Speed Racer in the intro and he's driving the Mach 5 through Africa on a race and there's like fucking uh, long neck giraffes. It's awesome. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is sweet. So it kind of reminded me of that. I was Motorcycle like, versus cool. long neck giraffe. Yeah, but it was yeah. I, I agree. Like some of the that stuff. Some was of the shots in, in this were yeah. Some of the shots that they definitely had for Africa. Mm-hmm. It, it was awesome. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. Uh, but it quickly descended into like propaganda mm-hmm. <laughs> in the worst possible way. Well, not the worst possible yeah. way, but um, so misguided. Checking to see if I have any notes here. I put one third comedy, one third nature film, one third fucking harrowing zombie film. Yeah, it is. Um, I wrote harrowing as well. <laughs> Wario wants to kill the main dude's cat, so the dude is like, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> and I was like, eh. Hey. Uh, this part cracked me up. Matebo, Matibo, his like uh, African friend, with I thought this was like the funniest line in the movie, where he's like, he's like, come on, get in the car. And he's just like, he looks at the line and goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> like trying to talk shit to him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, there's a part where the elephant destroys the boat, and it's like, it literally, like, trash compacts it. Mm-hmm. Like, no no problem for it. I was like, That's what it was about to do to uh, Tippy Hedron. He got a hold of her. Donnie Andy Lion did. ate shit. He got fucking killed. You Donnie Lion! <laughs> like, so his fucking last name is Lion? <laughs> so it'd be like Mike Human? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, this is fucking horrible, but it's like, yeah, it's all made up, so that's, like, the one thing that I'm kind of, like, when I watch that scene, normally I'd be like, dude, but they put that at the beginning, so I was like, thank God, because I I think for a movie like this, you have to have that separation. Like, obviously, with certain films, like, they won't put that, and, you know, you're kind of under the illusion, like, you know, if an animal gets killed, that, like, even, obviously, if it wasn't killed in this day and age, like, you have a more attachment, like, you know, damn it! But this is so real that they—I feel like it was a—they had to put that because mm-hmm. otherwise, it's like, you know, obviously, like I would think that line wasn't killed, but I was like, you know, you just have to know for certain that no animals were hurt or yeah. like killed, I guess. Because y- you can tell, like, every scene is so out of control. Like yeah. without knowing that, it'd be the like the scary, scariest film ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just put scene after scene of you're okay, and then they go fucking nuts and attack. So he's like, you're fine, you're fine. And then they're like, yo. I was like, Jesus. A lot of ADR exposition in the beginning, which was cracking me up. They're like, I can't believe your father just ran off. And it's like, they're not on screen. They're like showing some other shit. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't wait to see what he's up to, good old dad. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. This is B-roll talk. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> so what do you what do you what's your score for Roar? Um So like I I liked a lot of stuff about this film, but it's also at the end of the day, like nothing kinda really happens other than like you know, as far as plot wise, <laughs> yeah. the actual like action is out of control and stuff and like um the nature stuff is cool, but I think, like, a lot of times it kind of hangs on some of that stuff too much, and it kind of... Not that, like, I'm saying they shouldn't show the nature stuff. I think that, like, there's, like, a couple main things in this. It's, like, comedy pratfall stuff where, like, there are mistakes, and, like, oh my gosh, there's, like, horrifying fucking maulings. There's, like, shots of animals, like, watching and reacting to what's happening. (laughs) And... 
that's pretty much all that there is in this film. Um, and like, I didn't like, I liked, I liked it. I didn't like love it, but like it, it didn't, I wasn't watching it like this is pissing me off because these fucking animals are being fucking whipped or anything. It's kind of bullshit. Like I didn't know that they like drugged him up and rolled him down the hill. I thought that like that fucking, they like, you know, did that themselves. It was a stunt. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know, like probably like a 6.95, like I, and that's not that's not to say that like six point nine five as far as like I hated this or like I disliked it really. It was just like there's so little that happens in terms of like actual film that it's kinda like as far as like plot goes, I mean it's kind it's barely a movie. It's more like a nature doc with like uh, a major agenda. Mm-hmm. But what was on the screen was like you have to see this fucking film to like you know, understand. To believe. It was like, holy shit, um, that somebody was so fucking stupid and (laughs) insane to, like, try to get this to work because the main guy roped his whole family into this and I don't know how the hell he pulled that off because if if my dad was like, hey, by the way, we're gonna, like, fucking live with a bunch of lions, I'd be like, are you fucking high? Like, what (laughs) What are you on about? (laughs) Yeah, I was like, gonna get turned into more than a hot dog. (laughs) But I, I liked it. Nice. I'm glad that you picked it because, and I'm not trying to, like, I hate to give it, like, a 6.95. It's just, 7.95 is kind of, like, the standard. I think it's a little bit lower than that for me just because, like, I wish that, um, and I don't think the length is really an issue. I just also think that maybe if they had cut a couple things out, it would have been a little, a little bit tighter. I mean, I guess, mm-hmm. at the end of the day... This isn't a film that when he made it, he was trying to make this for anybody but himself. This was a vanity deal that Mm -hmm. him wanting to show his way of like, you know, loving the animals and stuff. And like this, Mm -hmm. this can be yours if you, you know, feed the animals and love wild animals. And it's like, holy shit, dude. (laughs) But yeah, I understand. I have to give him something, I guess, for like going as far as he did with it because. To the brink of almost death. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's another thing, too, is this, like, I mean, he put his family in fucking mortal danger, so that's a little fucking concerning. <laughs> but, at the end of the day, I mean, nobody got hurt. Um, the animals... A lot of people got hurt. Or, no animals got hurt. Yeah. But, like, I mean, kind of. So, I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm like, and by that, I mean, perfect. <laughs> um, I think for... Like, the nature stuff, though, this is, like, a 9.95. Like, they, they go out of their way to get great, like, animal shots, and mm-hmm. um, it's nice. When you see those small glimpses of, like, kisses by the animals, you're like, yeah. <laughs> So, I like that stuff. Nice. And I like the the supporting cast. Like, whoever they had to play, like, the people living in Africa were good. Mm-hmm. Um, when he goes to, like, borrow the car from the guy... <laughs> And that's another thing entirely. He borrows this fucking guy's car and instantly starts driving like a fucking wild man and fucking busts the tire. <laughs> and he's like, oh no. His acting too is like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, it's awful. Yeah, it's like, good lord. Um, anyway, so. Yeah. I um, say. For me, it's a 9.95. Like, I don't care that the plot is garbage or like, you know, none of that matters. This is like, unlike anything else and it's truly spectacular. I think everyone should see it. But don't pay full price. Yeah. I think that's the only thing I agree with you on is that everyone should see it. Yeah. Um, but it is pretty intense. Reason. Yeah, it's it's kind of like watching Jackass. It's like you're mm-hmm. not really getting anything out of it as far as like high, you know, high cinema, but it's like it doesn't really matter. It's it's like um, it's kind of just shocking. It is. Um should we move on to yeah. the next feature? Oh, for sure. Hell comes to Frogtown. From 1988. Yes, sir. Starring your boy. <laughs> Released by uh, Arrow Films, I think, right? Arrow Video. Hell comes to Frogtown. The special yeah. edition. Um, I think Scream Factory might have pulled one out more recent than that. Um, Screen Factory even around anymore? Oh, wait, not Screen Factory. I was thinking of Anchor Bay. <laughs> Remember when they used to be a thing? Yeah, they were great. Yeah. 
Uh, grappling with green gargantuans, wrestling icon Roddy, Roddy Roddy Piper speaks about his leading man turn. Wait, his leading man turn? It's like, huh? I'm like, that's what I think of when I think of, like, Roddy Piper's greatest roles as hell comes to Frogtown, not <laughs> fucking they live. Um, this was his first, have you first starring movie. Seen all these? Yeah. Like, what the does he say? What does he great. say? He talks about how excited he was for it being his first movie. He's like, yeah. And Fibian Armageddon. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just go into that. He uh, <laughs> he didn't get along with the director. Um, Who was the director? Donald G. Jackson. Hmm. Um, his wife came to set, and <clears throat> he called in the interview. He called his wife the poisonous dwarf because I guess she's short. <laughs> What, the director's wife? No, Roddy Piper called his own wife the poisonous dwarf. Is he still with her? Or was he? I don't know. That's funny. Um, The poisonous dwarf? (laughs) What? But I think his... He said, like, his wife got jealous because he's... Because of all those women. women. And then at one point in the interview, he goes, I'm banging six lizards a night in this film. (laughs) Just one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Um, Six lizards... (laughs) Like, they're not even lizards, they're amphibians, technically. Well, not only but, that, but it, he didn't even bang a fucking No, <laughs> I know. It's a great interview. Like, any interview with him is amazing, because yeah. he's a very uh, unique character. I think he's, like, to me, besides, like, Batista and, like, John Cena, I think he's, like, the third best wrestling actor, in my opinion. I think that, like... It, you would think that, like, people that have a lot of charisma would be pretty great at acting, but, like, that's not always the case. That's with Hulk Hogan. He's definitely better than Hulk Hogan. Was Santino Morella ever in a movie? Uh, Should have been. I would assume not. I don't know, though. I've like, never uh, really looked it up. Santa with Muscles too. Yeah. Or, like, in um, uh, Jingle All the Way too. Yeah. And, like, Larry the Cable Guy is in that film. Actually, maybe Santino is in that film, honestly. He could be. He's probably in every film. I just don't know. <laughs> um, so this film is shocking that it's not a trauma film, honestly, because like I totally see this being like a film that was made by like trauma, because the plot is so out there yeah. for a film. It's also like, what are the stats on this as far as like release? Was this like when it released? Did it come to theaters? Like, did I don't really know much about this as far as like that goes. It seems either. like kind of an out there plot. I mean, like, you know, they live's kind of out there, but like, so is like, about you know, sci-fi and stuff. But this is like kind of a little bit more out there with the whole like frog or like amphibian kind of deal, the frogs and. <laughs> they had a budget of one point five million. Um, was not well received by critics. I don't know. I can't find much about the release. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm assuming, like, a, not a lot of people had heard of this or seen it at the time. Did you know it has three sequels? I knew it had, like, at least one, but I, I didn't really look into too much more than that. You should have done a fucking... Or two sequels. You should have done, like, a Hell Comes to Frogtown week and picked all three. <laughs> like I did. Well, actually, I didn't do that with uh, Darkman. We just both watched them, didn't we? And mm-hmm. it kind of became that. Um, they sound pretty bad, but you never know. Yeah. Return to Frogtown and Max Hell Frog Warrior. <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper did not return. Yeah, I did see that though. They got like uh, the dude that had like the big chin or whatever. Yeah, Robert Z- Zidar. Yeah, and I was like, oh Jesus, <laughs> that guy's cool. I don't remember him being a super great actor though, so I don't remember. Maybe his chin up. does all the work. Yeah, his chin's good talk. Then again, like in the movies I've ever seen him in, he just played like a fucking bad Hinchman. guy and didn't do anything. So mm-hmm. I watched a trailer for one of the sequels and I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> It's like this acting is great. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a weird because it. I think he plays the same character, but it's like not Roddy Piper, so it's like. Ugh. But it's kind of a shame he didn't return. What do you think, think of Roddy's acting <laughs> as Sam Hell? I think he's good. It's just kind of like. I, it's like, the stuff he's saying here is just like, and he has to work with. It's like, this is like. I don't know. I feel like he's he's definitely like in a fucking Z list film. Like, 
Yeah, super low budget. You yeah. can totally tell. But it has enough uh, creativity. Yeah. Like, it's not just a total cash grab, like, ripoff. It has it's like some a, smart ideas. Yeah. It's like some, Mad some, Max with a fucking, like, with frogs, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> like, their whole plot is about fucking, like, everybody but, like, a couple people have become sterile like even women so it's like they're trying to rebuild the population and stuff and that's like their number one goal and stuff which it seems kind of out there but i guess if you were like if they were kind of like if you're really wanting to like especially back then rebuild humanity like it's not completely out of the question that there would be like a thing a program formed to like find people that would have the ability to still you know, have kids and mm-hmm. stuff and, like, have them go around and, like, have a dude like Roddy Piper go around and impregnate a bunch of people. I mean, obviously, they probably didn't know in the future that you could literally just do all that, like, intravenously and, like, <laughs> test tube style, but... Yeah, um... That's one thing I like about this movie is, like, the society's been taken over by women. Yeah. Um, and Roddy Piper is the most potent man <laughs> on Earth. They're like... His potency is off the charts. It's also like, implied must that have been he all has that like fiber a, yeah. I ate as a kid, which that's my favorite line in the whole movie. <laughs> it's like it makes no sense. <laughs> it's hilarious. But um, but it is kind of interesting because at the beginning he is like the sex object, not the women. Yeah. But then by the end they've totally become sex objects too. So it kind of doesn't stick with uh, that. Like they kind of treat them like shit when it's like, dude, this is like the most important person in the <laughs> fucking world, and you're like throwing his ass to the fucking wolves 24 <laughs> 7 i think he brings it on himself because like basically he's like wisecracking and talking shit the whole well, time like, i mean i guess escape. if we're getting into his actual <laughs> character he's like kind of a confirmed sexual assault fucking person so he's not exactly like the greatest fucking character right off the bat yeah. first couple this lines in this back. film are like yeah he was like can he's pretty much like a fucking rapist because he like takes on this he gets this one like t- goes after this one dude's daughter and then she when she becomes pregnant she's like drops the charges and it's like great way to start off fucking introducing <laughs> yeah. your main character it's like jesus it's not messing around yeah which i was like i thought that was kind of fucked up but like it's it's funny i kind of forgot about it like throughout the film but kind of a weird thing to start off with that oh your main character is like a fucking you know complete debaucherous asshole <laughs> um which is weird because like roddy piper doesn't play it like that like he doesn't play it like he's gonna try to like sexually assault someone whenever he gets the chance it's like he tr- plays it like an actual good guy he's kind of leans into his wrestling persona right which is like, like a, a to a degree depending on if he's a good guy or a bad guy mm-hmm. so it's like He's kind of playing, like, Roddy Piper, the the good man, which is, like, who he is, but it's, like, kind of shocking that they're, like, they they saddled him at the very beginning with this whole, like, yeah, he did this horrible, he's been doing these horrible things and going on this, like, fucking rampage, and then he's just, like, he completely, like, disregards that and acts like what they just said was not, didn't happen. I was just, (laughs) like, that's what I would have done. I would have been, like... What the fuck? You're trying to make me seem like a fucking piece of shit right out of the gate? Um, it's the apocalypse. It's bad times. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this movie is fucking out of control, dude. I think um, that's why They Live is so awesome, because he's not doing that in They Live. Like, he's playing an actual character. Yeah. It's very unlike his persona. Right. Which is super impressive not that i well i also think in this like film in this like movie. if if he had played that fucking character this film would have been like the worst fucking film of all time to watch he played a fucking sexual assaultist like <laughs> i wouldn't want to watch that fucking christ the frogs would have been the fucking heroes <laughs> i guess they still are kind of the heroes because you find out in this film that like they got put on fucking reservations native american style yeah it's like jesus who made who that's true <laughs> the frogs didn't have to be created. They were yeah. made by the apocalypse. I don't know, man. That was so fucked up. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> but then they, like, totally take control of Roddy Piper's hole. And nice. fuck him up. Uh, I was totally in on this movie on the very first scene because, uh, like, there's these scavengers out in the wasteland. Yeah. A, a yeah. masked person comes up and, like, kills this guy. 
And then it goes to a close up of his face, and he's like, "Ribbit." <laughs> it's like to frog you never find out who that is. <laughs> Which I was, I was actually thinking they were going to reveal oh, really? at the end when there was a f- mask guy. I thought they were going to reveal that that was like, you know, one of the frogs, or like, you know, a masked frog like helper or something, or I don't know something, but like. They just never did anything with it. But it was cool at the beginning, like, when he killed that was like, hilarious. Kills that guy. I was just kind of like, eh, what? But those guys were fighting over, like, a fucking statue. Yeah. He's like, this is bullshit. And I was like, why is this guy fucking beating this guy's ass for, <laughs> for this statue <laughs> that he throws away? Um, a little uh, tribute to Planet of the Apes. Yeah. I just thought it was, yeah, it was kind of like, also, like, I guess he knew he was a frog. Even though there was really no indication that Don't he was. Don't you mean a greener? A greener. <laughs> or he called him like worm lips or squid <laughs> lips. And I was like, why? Squid lips? That makes no sense. <laughs> Frogs known to be fucking hanging out with squids or eating them? Like, it's probably the other way around if, if they were in the same fucking area, right? I don't know. Squid versus fucking frog. <laughs> What'd you think of the score? Because it's like when Johnny comes marching home or whatever. <laughs> I thought that was a weird choice. Uh, it's <laughs> definitely no like roar with their music at the beginning. I don't know. It's kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's like... Burr, 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 burr. I was like... Hey. They did the same thing in Die Hard 3, yeah. but at least it was John McClane. So it's like, oh, Johnny's... He's come home. It's still stupid, but... <laughs> Actually, maybe that's worse, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's worse that it's John... Uh, John, John comes marching home for John McClane. <laughs> than it is for frogs come marching home. <laughs> they should have played Froggy Win a Corton. <laughs> or, uh, what's the song that Michelin Frog sings? Like, hello, my baby. Hello, oh, yeah. Baby. <laughs> I had one of them do that. I've been like, <laughs> Even though, like, you don't really see any of the frogs until, like, Act 3. Yeah, I was like, why? Um, yeah, like, the first like five minutes of this is like kind of setting it up you know okay or five or eight minutes or whatever it makes sense they put like a lock box on Roddy's cock and they're like it's gonna fucking blow up his wiener becomes property of the yeah they kind of do like escape from New York where like oh they're gonna fucking blow your shit up or whatever yeah. and you think later on that it's a fucking ruse but then it actually does blow up and I'm like so they were going to fucking blow up his... That makes no... Fu- That's another thing where I'm like, what? That'd be like putting a fucking bomb in, like, Fort Knox. If anybody tries to steal it, just blow it Sports up and Earth. ruin it. It's like, why? I think you put more thought into this than the filmmakers <laughs> did. Well, no, I... I... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just... I don't know. I just thought it made, like... I was like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? <laughs> You get where I'm coming from, though? Like, what? Yeah, but it worked. Yeah, I just thought it was like, why would you... Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, like, to keep him in a line. Honestly, they wouldn't even have to put a, put a bomb on it. They had a fucking, like, thing where if they pressed it, it would, like, hurt his cock. So they didn't have to put a fucking bomb on it. <laughs> like, what? what is, like, the upside of putting a <laughs> bomb on the thing that, like, you hold the most dear in the world? Like, if we can't have it, nobody will have it. It's like, well, no one else is going to want it. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Um, speaking of which, like, after the first eight minutes of, like, setting it up, like, nothing happens for, like, fucking 15 to 20 minutes. It's like <clears throat> fucking Wasteland Mad Max antics and shtick. Did you like how in the female society they painted all the cars pink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> makes total sense it's also one of those things where like it's like if people if there was a nuclear apocalypse and these people like live but they were in a fucking like like everybody that came out the other side were like in a stasis chamber and they like left a fallout shelter or something because that like nobody acts like oh man the war the only person that does is like Roddy Piper (laughs) All the rest of these people are like, eh, you know, we don't even really talk about it. It was so long ago. And I think they said it's not. it wasn't even that long ago when it happened, right? So it's like, I don't know. I was kind of like, man, these people like literally got fucking transported. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Because there's nobody with, like, you know, the old man isn't, like, he doesn't have, like, mutations or anything. Mm-hmm. Or, I guess, the, I mean, I guess it was, like, a nuclear apocalypse that, like, just made people sterile. Yeah. Um, Which I do know. I don't know. Did they say how long ago it was? I can't remember. I don't know. I thought at one point they, they said, but I was kind of, like... It seemed to kind of change because some people said it was so long ago, but Roddy Piper is old enough to remember it, so... Mm. And he's still... I was going to say he's still alive. <laughs> he's old enough to remember, and he's still alive! It's like... But you know what I mean? Like, he, he lost his, like, daughter and his... Or his daughter, yeah, in the apocalypse, which... I mean, that was kind of fucked up. That, I feel like that could have given the, the character a little bit more depth if they had, like, kind of established that beforehand. Or, like... Because they kind of... It's just a throwaway line. Mm-hmm. just kind of... Um, I liked the, um, the army lady. I feel like she didn't have enough to do, though. Sandal Bergman? Yeah. Um, I think she's amazing. She kind of just... They didn't really have her do much except for be the cavalry to agree and i was kind of like she should have kind of they should have gave her more shit to do um yeah i like she was in charge i did enjoy that part but she also was like (laughs) the nerd in the 80s like if you take a super attractive woman and put glasses on her and put her hair up she's like a scientist the nerd oh i was talking about the other lady that like drives the bus around oh yeah um what was her name cheech verrill as Sentinella. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her too. I felt like she should have been in it more. The main lady was okay. She was good, but like, her character was very conflicting. I was like, I didn't understand. She was like, fucking torturing the fuck out of Ruddy Piper for no reason. I was she like, had to keep him in line. <laughs> but at the end, she fell victim to his masculine ways. Couldn't, couldn't withstand. Yeah. <laughs> this movie should be like the fucking flip-flop Olympics. Like, which character can fucking flip-flop more? <laughs> Actually, the only people that didn't were the frogs. They were fucking awesome. Yeah. That's a, a huge shame in this film because... So, like, in a film like this, I would essentially think that the reason why they don't show them is because the fucking effects suck. Because a lot of times that'll happen in a film and she'll be like, you don't see the monster until, like, the very end. And when you do, you're like, oh, that's why they never showed it. Yeah. Like, when we saw the relic, I was like, why the fuck didn't they show it more? But <laughs> it's they too only, dark. Yeah. It's too dark, but in this, it's like when they finally show up, it's like, dude, this should have this like when they get to like Frogtown, that's where the fucking movie should have started, <laughs> like because like they have this cool like frog that's like a broker between like like he does trades under the table and he wears like a fez like Sala or whatever and really cool kind of like chill guy. There's like another frog that's like has an eye patch and he's been you assume mistreated by humans, so he's like hates them and stuff. And then there's, like, the king, and it's just, like, they have all these different, like, frogs, and it's, like, man, how cool would it have been to, like, have a frog with the fucking people the whole time? And it's not like the shit didn't work. There's a part where he, like, goes in, and you see, like, the full person frog take away, like, the one lady on a chain, and he's just, like, talking the whole time and stuff. It's not like it looked like shit. It was, like, awesome. And I was, like, dude. Yeah. Besides Roddy Piper, this is the whole fucking reason for this movie to exist. It's fucking awesome. I agree. Uh, I had some questions, though, about the people that were, like, human-frog hybrids, maybe? Like, were those supposed to be frogs, or were they supposed to be, like, human hybrids? I don't know. Because they weren't, like, frogs, like, you know, I was like, like that. They weren't frogs, like... They had human features as well as... Yeah, it was kind of like zombies in the background of a fucking zombie film, as opposed to the main zombies, like, (laughs) Bob. It was, like, people wearing masks or something. I was like, what? Like, I don't know if there was anything about that. I don't remember them saying anything I think anything they implied, about it, like, that they can breed, or that there was breeding happening <laughs> between humans and Yeah, frogs. something like that, like because the, there was a the lady, lady that was, like, on... a stripper, and yeah. he was like... Well, it was weird, because, like, he was like, yeah, let's have sex, but I'll put a bag over your head. But then he just, like, <laughs> left, and I was like... That's why I was like, there's no way this guy can be a convicted, like, sexual assault person, because, like, if that was true, he'd be going nuts on everything. You know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that was that was a cool touch, though, with that character. I mean, I liked a lot of the characters in this film. The old dude that was like, I was in the war, or whatever, and I was just like, holy shit, dude. How was how were you in a nuclear war, though? They're like, don't they just launch, they're like, at the beginning, where they're like, they launch bombs, they try it again two years later, and I was like, what? <laughs> they launched nukes again two years later? First time didn't quite take Yeah, it. I was like, huh? 
So we gotta talk about the dance of the three snakes. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> <laughs> What's that all about, Matt? Why don't you tell our audience? <laughs> I would want to do Dance of the three snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should uh, leave that to the audience. <laughs> See it for yourself if you want to understand what it means. It's implied that the fucking king... I'll do it. I'll do the dirty work <laughs> as usual. Yeah, I, like, you're like, you don't want this to come out of your mouth. Uh, yeah, it's implied that, like, the king gets a fucking boner and he has, like, three cocks. And he raises his shit up and he's like, come to me. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, the worst acting of all time. She's like... I'm not going near those. <laughs> and I was like... And then he's like... Argh! And the guy's like, hold up shotguns. Like, they're gonna fucking blow her head off if he doesn't, like... If she doesn't fuck him. <laughs> and it's like one of those things, obviously... I mean, they don't show it, but it's like, at the same time, I'm kind of... I was, like, curious. I was like... Because, like, they show his fucking pants, or whatever it's called. And it's like... They kind of raise up in three different spots. And I was like... <laughs> Are they legit, like, snakes? Or, like, does he have snakes for cocks? Like, what's going on here? I was so confused. I don't know anything about, like, what a frog's penis looks like, but it was just kind of, like, shocking. Um, they didn't show up, though, like I said. It was just kind of, like... That's by far the most memorable part. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's me. also that weird part where the dude says, shut your hole to the one guy. Like, the frog, you remember that? He's like, shut your hole! Mm -hmm. And I'm like... <laughs> I like the frog take voice was just, acting. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, the <laughs> it was uh, very there's yeah it was, over the top. It was so good. Like those parts were like for me far and away. Besides Roddy Piper, like I was, I think I was just you blown. Frog Town. Well, I so think I, I was just shocked that when they showed the frogs, it, it didn't look like shit. Yeah, and it actually looked as good as like the, the turtles. Movies, stuff. You can tell it's super low budget. It's yeah, it's like very kind of crappy looking. This guy, the what's his name. Shout out to uh, Stephen Wang for the makeup effects, because good God, this guy... It works. This guy, if he didn't, like, needed to work for, like, Jim Henson, because this shit was awesome. Yeah, it was great. And I was like, when I saw this, I was like, man, they could have totally done, like, a fucking Frogtown Turtles kind of deal with, like, the... the turtles come to Frogtown? The frogs or whatever from Turtles, like the Genghis Khan and all those guys. Because this was, like, legit. They looked awesome. I was just like, holy shit. Like I said, we've seen so many films where I've seen, like, like the effects like this, and they're just not up to par. And it's like, man, if they'd only gone that extra mile with this, they had, like, it was so good. I was like, man, I just want this to be, like, a character in the film <laughs> to yeah. be there the whole time, like Roddy Piper. Um, also, Roddy Piper isn't, like, speciest. He, like, doesn't dislikes, dislike frogs. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought that was cool touch for, for him to not, like, be like, yeah, these fucking fuck the frogs and stuff. Like, he was just as fine with them as people. And, in fact, he seemed to, like, actually like them more because they weren't, like, trying to turn him into a fucking sex slave. Yeah. I think that's another one of the interesting touches about this movie because they're yeah. not just generic villains. <laughs> right. They're, like, people that just happen to, I mean, happen like to be said, frogs. they're victims. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which, like... My thing is, like, why would why would you do that? Like, why would... I mean, I guess, why would you do that? But we did that to our own fucking species multiple times, so... Um, but it's, like, it's it, none of them seem to be, like... I guess it's, like, Planet of the Apes. None of them seem to be, like... Like, they didn't start out being bastards. They fucking... Like, the one dude that had the eye patch was made into a fucking, like, asshole. Because fucking humans beat the shit out of him. General Toady? Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> which, who's the guy? That, let's see, let's see here. Uh, this guy remembers his role as Commander Toady. Brian Frank. Uh, I'm a, does he do, like, just the, the fucking voiceover? Or no, what? I'm not sure. Gotta go into the, the Toady lore. Apparently he's most known for Boondock Saints 2. According uh, to IMDb. Huh. I, that's one that, like, I think people were waiting for so long for that when it finally came out, I, I personally never watched it. And then I heard it was, like, not super great. Uh, but I think that might be just because it didn't live up to the hype. Anyway. Um, yeah. Boondocks come to Frogtown. <laughs> Frogtown comes to Boondocks. I don't think I have any other notes. I mean, It's I, funny because I didn't take a lot of notes for this one. I mean, I've kind of been cutting back on taking notes mm -hmm. just in general, but, like... 
seems like I enjoyed the uh, the banter between you know right, the three characters a lot more than you did. Like I thought it was really funny. <laughs> and I thought okay. Sandal Bergman was amazing in this. Like she was great. Um, and I enjoyed her dance because she was a dancer in real life. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> seems like it didn't didn't quite do it for you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, eh. <laughs> um, the uh, I thought that like. Uh, <laughs> the third act kind of dragged a little bit with like, I was like, okay, this is over. And it's like, actually it's not, actually it's not. Uh, you kind of find out that like the guy at the beginning of the film that was like a general, like, or whatever his name was like, yeah, William Smith. Yeah. He ended up being like the bad guy of the film Mm -hmm. because he like worked with the frogs, which I guess that's not being a bad guy. That's just, but like at the end of the day, he was going to fucking kill Roddy Piper because he's like, I want to bring it back to the fucking men being in charge or whatever. And it's like, okay. Like, I mean, that guy kind of was portrayed as like a fucking bitch in the beginning anyway. So he was kind of acting kind of like a bastard to mm-hmm. begin with. He seemed like he was pissed at the world. So I could understand, I guess, if somebody was under the thumb of somebody like for so long but it didn't seem like they were like treating him like shit they were just like he was being an asshole and they were telling him to like fuck off (laughs) it'd be one thing if like he was like a nice guy and they were in the corner like fucking whipping his ass or fucking punching his lights out but they were just like get out of here and he was like you'll fucking rue the day it's like okay but he's a he-man woman hater i guess yeah (laughs) He was fuck. He was pissed. Yeah, I mean that character is kind of unnecessary. It was kind of generic too, because yeah. it made no sense. It was like, so this guy was under the thumb of women for so long, and I guess he, he it's not like he pretended that he liked women, and then like it was like a one eighty. Like that would have been something like, oh, okay, he mm-hmm. was secretly hating them, but it was like outwardly known that he was a complete asshole and fucking hated his position. So it's like, wow, what a shock! <laughs> this guy fucking that hates women, fucking hates women. And wants to fucking... What was his plan? To blow them up and then go blow up the fucking women at the headquarters? Like... <laughs> he had like a rocket launcher and I was like... Eh. That's right. Um, so there's a part where the fucking old man gets brained. They like blow his fucking head off. And he's Alrighty. like... He's like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> he's like, my nine lives are up. Bong. <laughs> and then uh, Roddy Piper and fucking... The King have a fucking fight on, like, the Star Star Trek fucking set. Yeah, exactly. It was the same yeah. location. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. <laughs> and the guy, like, falls to his death, and I was like, Jesus! That was pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, err. <laughs> um, but like you said, there's, like, sequels. It makes me kind of wonder if the sequels are more about the frogs, or, like, it's kind of the same retelling, or... I don't know, because... Yeah. Well, for my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> What's the second one? Return to Frogtown? Return to Frogtown. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. If, maybe maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe that'll be like an off, uh, off podcast watch. Yeah, I mean, I only was interested in this movie when I first heard of it because of Roddy Piper. Yeah, he rules. Um, but it's got a lot more to it. Yeah, I think definitely, like, it's great that he's in this film, but, like, this is definitely not... Like, if I'm, like, going to show people a wrestler, like, Roddy Piper's premiere roles, it's going to be, like, they live mainly just because he has more to do in that. Like, not, like, he's in this whole film, but like you said, he kind of just, they don't really give him much to do other than be, like, like, he's the the hero. Crack-wise. Yeah, but at the beginning, they kind of, like, paint him as, like, a villain, but then he, like, overcomes that by showing that, like, he isn't just, like, a sexual deviant, I guess. Like, he, he like, cleans up the lady after he has sex with her at one point. And they're <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, that's, like, such a, you know, <laughs> like, they were like, oh. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, oh. I uh, mean, you should have. Grab that little, uh, the blanket behind you and been like that for roar. <laughs> Got a little tiger on it. Whoa. Um, but yeah. Um, so what's your final score for Hell Comes to Frogtown? Um, just checking to see if any of those notes real quick, sorry. <laughs> I 
Wow, I literally have seven notes. Oh, I had one more. <laughs> this oh. movie was written for uh, Tim Thomerson to play the main dude. What? Which, Who the fuck is Tim Thomerson? He's that's, been in a lot dude, of... Dude, that's like, a great name. Yeah, it is. He's pretty good. He's been in a lot of movies like this, but I don't know. And then, um, well, who, what, what's he played before? I'm sorry, I don't really know who. That um, is. he's in Doll Man. He's like the main dude in Doll Man. Um, okay, but like crappy sci-fi movies, kind of like Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. like Jeffrey Combs. But then, um, after he passed, they tried to get Daniel Stern, which that would have been weird. <laughs> and then it was Daniel Piper. Stern. Yeah. Wow. I can't even picture that. He was on Workaholics for a couple, like an episode or two, and it was like he was horrifying as a fucking angry boss or whatever. Oh, really? And like, but normally he played like, I mean, obviously he's Home Alone, but other than that, it's like I've seen him in a couple other things, like uh, Chud. Remember he's in that. <laughs> <laughs> See our uh, previous episode. Uh, City Slickers mm-hmm. too. Um, Bushwhacked. Yeah. Remember that one. <laughs> is that the one where he takes out he takes the kids out or yeah, whatever and he like gets like fucked up or something <laughs> bushwhacked that was the thing that came to my mind I just couldn't remember the name of it <laughs> bushwhacked I'm fucking bushwhacked out man I like Daniel Stern but I can't yeah. quite picture him as as like, a sex symbol yeah exactly. well I see him more as like a dad the almost most, yeah. too so I'm like totally. that'd be weird I don't want to think of him oh, he was the dad not like I want to think of him as a sex symbol I'm like I want to think of him as a sex like, symbol like oh Marv yeah I'm like oh yeah, Roddy. He was the dad him. in Little Monsters. Remember that movie with Howie Mandel? <laughs> anyway, I remember that movie being actually kind of funny, but I can't. I, I bet if I watch it now, I'd I probably be like, horrifying. "This movie's horrible." Probably. When I was a little kid. You were horrified by the monsters under your bed. Watch that, and uh, what's it? What was that one movie with uh, the lady that like lady? Remember? <laughs> Damn it. The lady that remembered, like, or she had, like, a imaginary friend or whatever. Oh, uh, it's like Fred. Drop something. Dead Fred. Yeah. <laughs> I never saw that. I remember, like, seeing that one point and, like, think it was, like, scared or something. I don't remember <laughs> why. So maybe I'll have to rewatch that at one point. All right. So next week, Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> yeah, Little Monsters and Drop Dead Fred <laughs> for Matt's next pick. Oh, God. <laughs> Drop Dead Fred Wood. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I don't. Really, I guess I didn't really have any other notes, uh, right. other than Rod, my last note is Roddy Piper better than Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if I was especially when I was, Santa with muscles, when I was a kid, I would have been like bullshit. But now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, Roddy Piper is better. He's the best. He's better overall, just in general. Better wrestler, better funnier. Yeah, better person, better you know movie star. Like. Can you imagine Hulk Hogan in fucking a John Carpenter film? No. Wouldn't work. That would have been a fucking abortion, dude. Yeah. It would have been like... Uh... Maybe as, like, The Thing. <laughs> as, as a... Which, the, in the original thing, it was a wrestler. Was it? Yeah. They put, like, Frankenstein oh, okay, makeup yeah, on the original yeah, yeah. I was thing. like... <laughs> what? Like, the original script, it was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he could have been in The Fog. <laughs> as, like, the fucking main guy. <laughs> I would have been like, what the fuck is this? He's like, I hate when you're foggy or <laughs> scared. I'm like, hey. I would have no. rather seen him in like Halloween 4 than a fucking another Mike Myers film, but that's not saying Just much. make him wear the mask. Can't yeah. tell it's him. Just make make him. He'd be the next Kane Hodder. He'd be, that'd be the horror film with fucking Hulk Hogan as the bad guy. Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder coming to a convention near you. <laughs> like, oh, finally, he's coming to a convention. Okay. Enough Kane Hodder shit talking. All right. So what's your final score? Um, Probably give this one like a 7.95. Nice. Good stuff. It's I'm going to I'm gonna do the same. Nice. Um, it's got Roddy Piper. It's got frogs. Yeah. It's hilarious. I see it. It's true. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> Great picks, man. It's good, dumb fun. <laughs> GDF. <laughs> so what's on tap? GDF word. Mike Wig. <laughs> good, do, good, dumb fun. <laughs> so <laughs> next week we're gonna be watching two movies that are f- the favorites of some fictional characters. We're gonna be watching. 
Austin Powers' favorite movie. In like Flint, baby, my favorite movie. <laughs> nice. And then we're going to watch Our Man Flint. Dude. D Space Nine, Dr. Julian Bashir's favorite film. Our Man Bashir. Dude, nice. So, I've never seen great. these, and I have like a, the unopened set, and it even has like the TV film. What? But I'm super excited to uh, watch those. I just haven't actually like ever watched them yet. Yeah, that same set. I've seen one of them. I don't remember which one. Yeah, yeah, because on the back it, it says uh, it talks about uh, Our Man Flint something, the TV movie that came out. Lost TV pilot Our Man Flint. Yeah. So it's a double feature. Yeah. And are we gonna do the weird watch? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Whoa, Flint week. We might as well. Apparently, it says there's commentary on both movies yeah. and featurettes or something. Because yeah, I have that same collection. Nine was... never before seen featurettes. <laughs> They're probably like a minute long. <laughs> Yeah, I remember my dad got this set back in the day, nice. and we watched one of them, and I can't remember which one. You so. guys watched it or whatever? Mm-hmm. It's been a long do you, time. Do you remember anything about it? or just I remember, remember enjoying it quite a bit. Nice. Oh. <laughs> That's great. That'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. Good week. I'm pretty excited. Um, move over, James Bond. Step aside, Austin Powers. It's like... Okay. <laughs> Like obviously, step aside Austin Powers, a movie that would be thirty years after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> step aside Austin Powers, like a movie that was based on James Bond and like in like fun, <laughs> like what? Cool. Yeah. So the era of animals has ended after we learned so much, but the era of Flint will just begin. So, nice. Right. Until next week. What, Mike? You look different. What happened? Okay. Um, how should we end this? If <laughs> you like, get a gun. I'm like, Jesus! Um, fucking put a shotgun in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No. <laughs> You're like, fuck you, die. I'm like, her. Animal week. Yeah. Are you ready? Shit! <laughs> Hold on, let's try this again. No, that's perfect. <laughs> there we go. I'm like, yeah! <laughs> movies about Animal Week. The movie is about Animal Week. I've got like one li- I look like I'm like a freaking pervert. I'm looking through a tiny hole. <laughs> trying to see what I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm a big if there's a door in the moonlight. So, um. I look different. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to say, not I'm a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're fucking awfully calm <laughs> for seeing that I fucking turned into a frog. Should I do something different? No, I just think that's what makes it funny. Okay. <laughs> Does that look right? Is yeah. it on my eye? It is. No? Is it or no? Yeah. That's okay. Dead center. I can't see shit. <laughs> Just look at the camera and be like, ribbit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ribbit. Bye. <laughs> I do one little thing and you're like, whoa. <laughs> but I turn into a frog and you're like, hey, Mike, you look a little different. <laughs> Nine point nine five. Emotion is feeling so high. Nine point nine five. In overdrive, put your body in overdrive. Nine point nine five.